A couple days ago, I posted the trailer for the Artist Series, which was very well received by you guys, and I am really excited about that. This is a project that has really involved a lot of my time over the last six months, and really the project itself, uh, the idea of it goes back several years. So to finally be able to share some of this stuff with you guys is really exciting for me. And what I wanted to do for today was actually do a Q&A, and I wanted to turn this around on you guys and wondering if there was any questions you guys had about the Artist Series. So I posted on Facebook and Twitter, and I had a large amount of replies and I want to read some of those questions because I think there's some really good ones. The first question is from Sally and she writes, how did you manage to pick just three artists and how did you reach out to them? Can't wait to watch. This is actually the first three of about eight photographers that I'm going to be working with this year and to some of you who are newer to the show, the idea for this project came about last year and I did a crowdfunding campaign in October and it ended up being wildly successful. The idea was to try to fund the first video, to come up with the money to do the travel and actually filming to get it done and it was wildly successful I was like 300 something percent overfunded on it and I realized that it would be a better use of the funds that I had on that to try to go for an entire year on this and I realized I could do that so I've reconstructed a little bit um, to accommodate that and really ultimately I see this as being an even bigger project uh, my whole goal because I don't think anybody's done it to this point is to have an ongoing series of photographers who represent the best of the best of the living photographers that we have today. I think it's important, I think it's it's different, and I don't think anybody's done it. And so I'll have to figure out how to fund it again after this year, but that's kind of the idea. So there's about eight people total that I'm gonna be working with this year and maybe more if I can work it out, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, in terms of how do I reach out to people, I mean, there's really no trick to that, and I wish I did have one because it takes a lot of time. So the first thing I did was I just made a list of if I could get anybody I wanted, who would that be? And so I just made this master list and then just started ticking them off, and let's go in order of priority. Uh, who would who do I want to reach out to? And literally, you go to their website, and you see if they have a contact information, and usually it's a form, and you never hear back. Then you got to go to plan B and try calling a number, see what gallery represent them and it, it takes a long time. It's a very frustrating process. I wish it were faster. Um, it took a good three months just to get that going and then once you do get a hold of somebody and they're actually interested in doing it then it's a matter of trying to schedule it and that gets even more difficult. So anyway that's kind of how I'm working on it and uh, man, if somebody knew a faster way that would be great but I don't think there is. Second question comes from Scozio who writes will you strive for gender and race representation in the series? That is actually a really good question. I'm glad you've asked that. And the short answer is yes, that I am striving to represent diversity in the artists that I choose. Having said that, though, I want to be clear that I'm choosing people based on their contributions to photography first. And I would never pick somebody because I need to fulfill a hole with either gender or cultural background or something like that. But having said that, and I want to use the word culture for just a second, because I think in terms of art history, art at its best represents a cultural diversity. It represents who we are as people in a certain place in a certain time. And I think if you look through the entire history of art, whether it's photography, painting, whatever, uh, music, theater, uh, poetry, it, it all represents that way. It is a reflection of our culture. Now, having said that, I am going for a great deal of cultural diversity in who I am choosing. And so that is a big impetus because I think that plays a role in what would make this interesting. I think it plays a role in what would make this accurate in terms of historical representation of photography. So I think that if I'm successful in doing that, then the rest will fall into place. I think that, you know, that's one of the things about art is it doesn't discriminate against gender or race. Um, it really is encompassing of a whole. And so that is what I'm going for with the artist series. Next question is from Max, who asks, which photographer gave you the most inspiration to go out and shoot? That is actually a really tough question to answer. And for me, you know, all the people that I'm, I'm reaching out to to be in the artist series, they're people who represent the best of the best. They're people that I've known their work for years I've looked up to they're my heroes and so just to be able to go over to their studio and spend the day talking about photography and looking at prints I mean for me I have to pinch myself sometimes because it's like this can't be happening it's just so surreal and so in that sense it's always inspiring you know I'm hanging out with Alexei Tedorenko I've admired his work for years I walk in the studio and he hands me and his camera and says this is the Hasselblad I used on all the long exposure and it's like whoa yeah you know it's just amazing and so everybody you come out of there inspired and ready to get back to work and go shoot. But to answer your question, there was one person so far who's been very different in that in an unusual way, and I think this is really special, and that was Laura Wilson. Uh, Laura Wilson, I'm very familiar with her work. I think she's very under
underrated. I think she's lesser known than she should be. Uh, she started her career out as Richard Avedon's assistant in the 80s, and she was very close to Richard. She was with him when he died. And in addition to that, she has had her own very successful career doing editorial work, and she is a fabulous photographer. She just wrapped up a solo retrospective at the Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth. All three of her sons are famous actors, Andrew Wilson, Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson. And so I think she has a different kind of approach because it's not just about photography. It is about creativity and art and all the things that, that we do as a photographer, but it's just not limited to that. And so the last question of the day, and my assistant actually asked her the question, and it was a real uh, base level question of what advice would you give to somebody who is aspiring as a photographer? And she turned it around and she used the term um, talking about what it's like to live a creative lifestyle. And I really love that. I thought it was really poetic and I don't want to spoil too much of it because I'm I want to save that for her interview. But it was really special because I think it was just a very different way of looking at things. And I think that's just how Laura is. And she's very thoughtful. She's very informed. And she's highly intelligent. And she's just really inspirational. And I think of the artists, uh, she was just a little bit different like that. And I think they've all been very inspirational. Next question is from John, who says, do you see any themes that bind these artists? Character traits or style similarities? Also curious as to how each artist was chosen for this project. Honestly, I didn't intentionally do anything that would bind thematically any of the three photographers. I'm simply releasing these because they're the first three that I finished. Um, but to answer your question, though, I think, you know, as I get into the artist series and as I've done more of these, there certainly will be connections that you'll be able to draw between people. You know, uh, you know, I could constrict it a lot. I don't think it would be possible to do, but if I just wanted to do photojournalists or I just wanted to do portrait photographers or what have you, um, I think that, you know, we'll have little subgroups in these. But there was no deliberate connection on my behalf in any of these. Having said that, though, when I did the trailer the other day, I learned a hard lesson in that trailers are really hard to edit. They're almost as hard or harder than the actual videos because you have to make the three people it has to be cohesive and it has to make sense and you don't want to give people too much and it doesn't need to be too long and I, that was probably one of the hardest videos I've ever edited. I had three friends that I was like calling, can you look at this and you know, tell me what you think and I got through it but it was really tough. But having said that though, the way I've interviewed people, I mean they do have commonalities and I think the differences are what make that interesting. So for instance, the commonalities would be talking about, you know, kind of their struggle as early on as they were becoming artists. Um, I think some of those things include you know, creatively how they think and how they operate. And so, you know, I was able to pull kind of categories from those interviews to play off of. But I, to this point, there's no deliberate connection that I've made between any of these people. And uh, if, if I pulled that off in the trailer, then uh, I'm really happy that happened. Next question is from David, who writes, what is the status of photography as a fine art among art museums and their curators? What trends do you see emerging in contemporary fine art photography? That is a tough question and probably beyond the scope of what I can answer here, but I will try to address it. So you're asking about fine art among art museums and their curators, and it depends really it, well, it always depends on what kind of a museum you're talking about. There are museums and cultural institutions that um, run more of a historical perspective. They build their collections around things of historical significance. So those museums probably don't deal a lot in what would be happening now in contemporary photography. There are museums that do deal with contemporary photography, like the J. Paul Getty Center in Los Angeles, for instance, uh, ICP up in New York. Um, they do exist, and they really care about pushing the envelope. And then when you look into the art dealer side of things and like who sell directly to collectors and that can be a very different world as well so that's one of the things that and I'll say this that photography I think because I worked in an art museum for so long one of the things that frustrates me sometimes about photography and I know why it's because it's a fairly young medium it hasn't been around as long as painting and sculpture you'd think it'd been around long enough but it's this is still the case is that it gets siloed off as its own thing so often um, you know you have museums that sometimes bring it in but but they don't really include it with the other stuff. It's like, here's art and here's photography over here. And to further silo it, um, a lot of the trade shows that, that uh, we do in the photography community tend to be just geared towards photography. And so that is a little bit unfortunate and something that maybe one day will change. But, you know, if you look at photographers who are really pushing the envelope, I think in a lot of... A lot of terms, I think what's what's popular now in terms of the last couple of years, I think photographers that 
there's a scope. Um, there's people who embrace older technologies like collodion or you know historical process and then bring it into a current realm. I think that's been a thing. I think um, the whole rise of digital I think has been a question for a lot of artists. I think there are a lot of artists that, that start working in multimedia, whether that be film work, um, mixed media, sculptures involved somehow. So that that can be a thing too. And so there, there are kind of some different things. And like you know, I would like to represent some of those photographers in the artist series. For instance, uh, you know, the J. Paul Getty Center last year I went to a really cool show on alternative process and this evolution of, of what film is being done and manipulations and it covered like photograms and things like that and two of the big photographers from that exhibition were Chris McCaw um, who does those those long exposure daylight images where the negative catches fire and that becomes part of the work or the paper that he's using and then Lisa Oppenheim I think is doing some really amazing work they're very cutting edge photographers they're very young so you know we don't know until you know a couple years in of whether they have staying power or not, but you know, they're doing some really interesting work in pushing the envelope, and I hope to be doing that with the Artist Series as we move forward. Having said that, next week I'm going to be in New York City again. Many trips to New York this year. And I'm actually going up there to do some networking for the Artist Series um, at an association uh, gathering called um, called APAD. And I will put APAD's link below. It is open to the public. And a couple months ago, I was in Los Angeles and I went to Classic Photographs LA. And this is kind of a similar deal, but much bigger. And this is a big show. It's a big show for collectors, uh, dealers, galleries. Um, and this is a big one. There'll be a lot of curators there. There'll be a lot of photographers there. It is open to the public. And if you want to get tickets, I'll put links to everything below. So I'm going to go do some networking at that. And so it will be kind of interesting to see because I've never been before um, kind of what that feels like and how that will work with the show and the artist series and all that stuff. And I'm kind of nervous about it and really excited all at the same time. Anyway, that's all the questions I've got for today. Um, next week we got a lot of cool stuff planned and I'm really looking forward to it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to The Art of Photography and you'll know exactly when everything comes out. The artist series starts on April 24th and I will link the trailer up in the show notes as well as around here somewhere and uh, click on that and go check it out if you haven't already. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.